last night. commenting on his face and the uh, thing that you'd already seen, the two things you'd seen earlier on. Pushed them later. Pushed them later. I just thought that was better. So I, I did a kind mm, of return to mm, Trump's trial mm, after mm. this and I did the MSC talk to the face, Bill Maher, and then RFK was asked to be Trump. Makes sense. Kind of I, you know, when I was reading it, it's like a classic thing, I didn't miss those things. I didn't go, where's yeah. the things? Yeah. They're there, they're, 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 they're there if you need them and they're in the hero video anyway. So it's good. It's a very good choice. So thanks. We didn't get a chance to put that thing in about, but it So the guy. Hello there, you Awakening Wonders, you're in a war. You knew that already, this is war. This is 360 war. This is the war that you've been waiting for. This is the apocalypse, this is Armageddon. Let's get ready, let's get ready right now. If you're watching us on YouTube, we'll be there for the first 15 minutes because while the judiciary is used to wage war against a presidential candidate, at least I know that's what a lot of you think in the Rumble chat, whilst the judiciary is deployed to shut down dissent, while everywhere we look we see the systems of the establishment, whether it is the legacy media or parliamentary or congressional politics or, you know, even more terrifyingly, literal military war. We know these are the days. Somewhere inside you, you're awakening to the fact that this is the day that you, you are being called by your name to awaken. This is the time where we must turn. This is the time where we must throw off the shackles. This is the time where we must reject their narrative. And in order to do that, we must, of course, First, be well informed, and by the end of this show, we will be better informed together, for we shall wade through the slew of untruths that they call news. We've got a fantastic guest coming on the show today, Dr. Asim Malhotra. I feel confident in saying Dr. Asim Malhotra is a friend of the show. We've had him on many times. He's a cardiologist. He lost his own father. And at that point, his father was also a physician, by the way, in circumstances that some of you watching this right now We'll be beginning to suspect when I say we can't talk about it openly on YouTube, but we will be asking him about that and about how the tide is finally turning when it comes to people being asked the right question and the right questions about events during the pandemic period. You're not going to want to miss that. You're going to want to join us for that. In fact, you're going to want to become an awakened wonder because when you are an awakened wonder, like Shaman 7-Eleven and Janice 6, you get access to our content first. You get exclusive videos every single week and you get to join us live for conversations with like Friday's guests here, Roseanne Barr. Roseanne Barr was asked questions directly from members of our audience. You should become one. And we are so confident in this. We're willing to give you a month for free. Use the code I surrender if at any time you don't think this is improving your life, if you don't think this is awakening you, if you don't think that we are arming you to assuage and confront these demonic attacks that continue even now, then, you know, 
We, we don't want your money. We believe in your freedom and we want your attention and we want your time. On this Tuesday, we've got an extended live show. That's happening right now. We've got a brilliant interview with Dr. Live Nels coming up soon. We do a live book club where we talk about important books that you'll love joining us for. And we do exclusive videos every week about the issues you want to discuss that are only available to our subscribers. So join us because I suppose let's talk about it. There's escalating war everywhere. And the Trump trial is fascinating. But what have they really got against Trump? Is it that he gave Stormzy Daniels a couple of pounds to keep her mouth shut? Stormzy, shut your mouth. Stormzy, put a lid on it, Stormzy. It's actually stormy. Oh, well, you know. Or is it judicial lawfare? Why don't you let me know in the chat right now if you think that this is about justice. Now, remember what justice is. There's a reason that justice as depi is depicted always as being blind. Justice doesn't care who you are. Justice doesn't care if you're Donald Trump. Your name is irrelevant. It is the principle. Which, pr what, which principle of justice is being pursued right now? And <laughs> you're aware, of course, that they can't find a single unbiased juror to adjudicate on the case or at least observe the proceedings as jurors are supposed to. Now, you know, not many people enjoy jury duty, do they? I mean, who here? Let me know in the chat if you enjoy jury duty. Um, so it's possible that of those 100 people, the reason that 40 people went, I'm out, is because they thought, oh, I'm not sitting here for six weeks listening to this claptrap. But the real problem is, is, is there anyone in the world right now that is impartial and unbiased on the subject of Donald Trump. Either you're part of the whirling hysteria that the legacy media continually conveys on behalf of the establishment, or you're part of the judiciary appealing seemingly willingly to the baser instincts of a Democrat Party establishment that's not willing to face Trump at the ballot box with this argument. You don't need Donald Trump. We are going to stand for ordinary Americans. They can't ever make that claim. They can't ever make that offering. So the only option they've got is to tie Trump up in continual legal battles. Whether you love Trump or you don't love Trump, whether you're a Bobby Kennedy person or a Donald Trump person, or whether you believe it's the system itself that ought to be on trial, the system itself that ought to be facing justice, we'll be covering this story for you right now. And in fact, let's get into it. They can't find a single juror of the hundred that turned up. None of them. They were immediately excused. And did you hear about the one person that went, well, I've read art of the deal. And Donald Trump was always like, hey. <laughs> and you can imagine Donald Trump just taking a moment there to think, they still love me. If you're watching this on YouTube, we'll be available for another 10 minutes. Then we will. you're going to have to click the link in the description to join us on Rumble, where that freedom freely streams as we communicate quite freely, uncensored, unexpurgated, in order to reach you directly. Of course, there's a meme because Donald Trump, he dozed off, didn't he? Uh, Sleepy Donald Trump sparks meme fest and lots of them work, you know, as you won might imagine, like, well, there's this one, Don Snorleone, that's a good one. But a significant issue, perhaps, when it comes to Donald Trump, we've already talked in some depth about Donald Trump's stated position on Iran and the fact that perhaps Trump's boxes of confidential documents contained important information about potential conflict with Iran. And information, for example, that there's been a long-standing intention to militarily engage Iran, and that's been part of the problem. And actually, broadly speaking, what is Trump's position on war? Is it true that no new foreign law wars, excuse me, wars started under Donald Trump? Is that true? And what do you consider to be more important? Trump's apparent hush money and misappropriation of funds. I believe that's a component of this case. Uh, again, though, an argument that could be made uh, again to the, the, the Democrat Party. The Steele dossier revealed, of course, that the Clinton, uh, the, the Clinton campaign spent money trying to demonstrate the veracity of the Russia gate scandal, which has been proven to be entirely untrue. Let's have a look at this, because this is an interesting turning point. As tensions escalate in the Middle East, is it possible that Trump, whether you love him or hate him, and it will be one of those, because no one's impartial on Trump, that's why you can't find an unbiased juror anywhere because of the constant high-octane hysteria that surrounds Trump. Do you think that this is about Stormy Daniels and hush money, or do you think potentially Trump is an anti-establishment figure? Is he the swamp drainer that he claims to be. And as Joe Biden acquires another nickname, Genocide Joe, due to the United States participation in activity that ultimately facilitates the ongoing 
genocide in Gaza, Trump's crowd are starting to enjoy Sleepy Joe's new nickname. Let's have a look at this. She is a big problem. Genocide Joe, good nickname, could be catchy, it might stick. Icy Cold in the chat says, I'm impartial. But is anyone impartial on the subject of, of Donald Trump now? And is anyone impartial on the subject of an escalating Middle Eastern war? And exactly when did this war begin? Did this war begin on October the 7th? Or when you hear words and place names like Jerusalem and Damascus, are there significant clues in that? And when did America become co-opted by military industrial complex interests? And when did John Bolton, one of the most hawkish men in American political life, become a darling of the liberal and progressive media. Remember, their whole raison d'etre, their whole aesthetic is, we are the progressive media. We are the reasonable ones. We are the academics. Hold your nose. There's a basket of deplorables somewhere nearby. When did they start showcasing John Bolton? John Bolton, who believes that Dick Cheney, the warmonger, the Halliburton Iraq warlord, Dick Cheney should be the president of the United States, according to John Bolton, and he is the friend and favourite of CNN and all of their legacy media acolytes. Of course, uh, Bolton has condemned Trump as delusional, so at least that alone makes him a reliable pundit on these kind of legacy media outlets. But what else does John Bolton believe. I understand the ideology, my enemy's enemy is my friend. Are they so demented, so deranged with anti-Trump fever that even a man that advocates for Dick Cheney as president, Dick Cheney, the consequences of decisions that man made are being felt by us all now. Do you feel that we are becoming more vulnerable to terror attacks on domestic soil as a result of escalation of tensions between Israel and Iran? Let me know in the chat right now. Do you think it's yes or no? Just wire in. As, these, as conditions escalate in the Middle East, are we more or less likely to experience terror in the United States of America or the United Kingdom? Let me know. Y or N? Yes or no? John Bolton believes that the person steering the United States into an era of peace and glory is Dick Cheney. Let's have a look. And you've said you're going to write someone in in November. That's what I did in 2020, and I'll do it again this November. Who did you write in in 2020? You've never revealed that before. Well, uh, I, I might as well say it uh, now. I voted for Dick Cheney. Wow. And I'll vote for Dick Cheney again this November. You'll write in Dick Cheney. That's right. What made you write him in? Because he was a principled Reaganite conservative, and he still is. KRG in the chat. Remember when he shot someone in the face? Yeah, I do remember that. Dick Cheney loves war and violence so much that even when he's out just in a leisure activity, someone might get shot. I don't even think they were hunting. I think they were playing golf. And I'm spelling that with an O, not a U. Uh, age is no longer a factor in American presidential politics, so his age doesn't disqualify him. And I think he'd do an immensely better job than either Trump or Biden. What about his daughter, Liz Cheney? Well, I like Liz a lot. And, uh, you know, maybe someday she'll get my write-in vote, too. But right now, I'll stick with her father. I like Dick Cheney. I like Liz Cheney. I like anyone that will advocate for war and that is anti-Trump. Do you know there are many people that believe, in fact, this is, isn't this reporting from a left-wing legacy media outlet, an online advocate of the Democratic Party? Isn't the reason that John Bolton left the Trump administration is because Trump wouldn't let him start a war. So why is Trump getting mired in this lawfare? Is it because of an affair or is it because he wouldn't engage in warfare? This is uh, some reporting from Vox. Now, Vox is hardly a friend of Donald Trump. When Bolton joined the administration in 2018, the worry was that the arch nationalist hawk would convince the war averse Trump. War averse, I think, is a good quality. You know, look, let me know what the reasons are that people hate Trump. I don't know what some of them are. He said some pretty inappropriate stuff. He's um, like alleged to, to be like racist and stuff like that. Like the, 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 some of these allegations seem somewhat hysterical. Indeed, as we have seen, no juror that is in, well, not no juror, but I don't believe that anyone's impartial on the subject of Donald Trump. I don't believe, I mean, icy cold in the rumble chat claims to be. But 
What is it? The fact that someone's war averse seems to be a pretty bloody good quality in an American president, except unless America are directly under attack. Like, unless China start circling the United States of America much in the manner that the United States are militarily surrounding China right now in the South China seas, unless uh, um, the R Russia start to situate missile bases and KGB forces in Mexico in much the same way that the CIA are co-opting Ukraine and trying to use it as a vassal state, then, yeah, let's tool up, baby. Let's get ready to go. But until then, America's might ought be utilised to deploy the values of peace and diplomacy. Am I right? Yes or no in the chat? Why or in? Peace. What do you want America's power utilised for? War or peace? War or peace? It's a pretty simple question, almost rhetorical, but I do appreciate your answer because we make this show entirely for you. We're streaming while the rest of the world is dreaming because we have no choice but to be awake. Let's continue with what a mouthpiece for the establishment, Vox, is saying on the subject of John Bolton. Uh, despite Bolton's best efforts, do you know sometimes I think about Michael Bolton a little bit? Just the surname is so evocative of like M Michael Bolton. I can't get him out of my mind. I can't get him out of there. Trump pursued diplomatic talks with North Korea and resisted escalating tensions despite a resumption in missile tests. I remember that, Rocket Man, all that stuff. That was pretty cute, wasn't it? And even after reimposing crushing sanctions on Iran, Trump repeatedly said he'd be willing to negotiate a better nuclear deal with the Islamic Republic's top officials. There's little indication Trump wants to ignite another war in the Middle East, despite his tough Iran stance. It goes to show that Trump is in control of the most important aspect of his foreign policy, whether or not to go to war. Would you argue that that is the most important aspect of the United States of America's foreign policy, and indeed maybe even domestic policy? Toolman154 in the chat. God's grace is peace. Surely that that is true. Surely that's the truest thing that any of us can say to one another. If you're watching us in YouTube, on YouTube right now, you know how we're censored. There's no way you can bring a man like Asim Malhotra onto a show who's going to spit truth and download bars of divine openness. You can't have him on YouTube. The community guidelines are go through the roof. The community guidelines. What are the community guidelines? They're whatever the World Health Organization need the community to be guided towards. If you need to be guided towards compliance, if you need to be guided towards tyranny, if you need to be guided towards a technological dictatorship, then you better believe that we will be participating in that nightmare with them. So, there you go. War, what is it good for? We've got Dr. Asim Malhotra coming up on the show, and if you're watching us on uh, YouTube, remember, click the link in the description. We never shy away from deploying the wisdom of Glenn Greenwald, whether it's here on our principal Rumble stream, or for the Awakened Wonders watching us even now. I'm talking to you, my sock puppet, who's got hashtag world peace linger in the chat even right now and um, bab cornflake and shaman 7-eleven and jack swiss some of our fine friends there who remember get access every single week to an exclusive video only available to them and they join us for conversations that i promise you will change the world we have no choice now we're like the early christians we're like century one. We've got no choice but to get out in there into the street and convert and evangelize. I, I swear to you, I don't care if you are a Muslim or if you are a Jew or if you are an evangelist atheist. I'm just telling you now, this is the time to look across the aisle. This is the time to find a smile for people on another part of the spectrum to you because they want you controlled and locked down. We told you yesterday that the Pfizer Act that's just been passed again is deployed against George Floyd protesters and Jan Six protesters alike. They don't care. They want you lifed off and they want you locked into arguments and combat so that they can control you. As long as you're bitter about another person's faith or culture or race or creed, they got you right where they want you. And let's drink to that in a mug that stands for sweet freedom itself. Oh, it doesn't taste like sweet freedom, though. It's gruel, I tells you, and it's grueling. Now, uh, yeah, remember, come and awake and wonder. If you use the code I surrender, you get one month free. That's how confident we are in it. Let's have a look at what Glenn Greenwald's got to say about John, how am I supposed to live without you, Bolton. John Bolton is not the country, only the country's most bloodthirsty and deranged warmonger. He's, the, he's thirsty for blood 
and he's deranged. But he wrote in Dick Cheney for president in 2020 and will do it again this year. He likes it. Yet he's beloved by CNN and MSNBC who treat him or which treat him as a wise foreign policy expert solely because he bashes Trump. Does this help you to understand that we live in a state of delirium, that they have no principles? They have no principles over at CNN. It's terrifying that the principles of justice are no longer blind, but have one eye on a particular outcome when it comes to the election in your nation in November. It's terrifying that the legacy media don't print all the news that's fit to print, but convey all the propaganda that makes sure it goes their way. It's terrifying that an organization as vast and sprawling as Google are willing and able to manipulate outcomes in elections and create a news cycle for you that traps you in the very delirium that we have to awaken from, that we have no choice but to awaken from. We're going to leave you on YouTube right now. Let's start that countdown. But as we go, let me tell you, have you seen my, have you seen my ball bags? Have you seen my ball bags? Look at this. This item is 25% off this week. This is what you could pack anything that you wanted to within reason and within the confines of the law. 25% off this week. All of our merchandise goes to supporting people that have mental health problems, people that have drug addiction issues to get them into treatment. You can ask us about it by uh, emailing us or reaching out to some locals. We'll tell you all the details. And if you need help, God knows we'll help you. Click the link in the description. I see my hot truck coming up.